Hey everyone, and welcome back. So we're gonna be talking about building inputs with atomic elements. So I like to call this inception because sometimes components can get pretty complex. Now, if you notice, we just have a field here and you know, essentially this field isn't going to be the only part of the component that you use to actually create an input field. You're gonna have other components as well. So one of those components could be something like a label. And we can create our own little label component. And I'll show you how that works. So what I've done here is I have some text. I think that's fine in terms of the typeface choice. You can probably give it, I think that's cool. Okay. So this is our label. And we are just going to do that. We're gonna duplicate it here. And you may have noticed that this is pretty similar to the type of inputs that we use in our demonstrations earlier on like forms, inputs and buttons and stuff like that. And I'm gonna show you just how I did that. So this could be like a description. We're gonna right align that. So what we're doing here is we're making a component just for labeling. We can drop that down to 50. We can even go probably down to 25%. Uh, actually, let's just jump back up to 50. And we're gonna make that regular. So this is our other component. I'm gonna switch that. Okay. I'm not going to allow my label to go further than this. And I'm not gonna allow my description to go further than that. Okay, so we've set some constraints in there. What we can also do is go into our assets and select an icon that we wanna use. Okay. And now the great thing is like we can show and hide these things. So we have a description, icon, so it's the info icon, so it's an instance of a, another, an icon component. And if we just option command G, we've created a frame and we can call this label. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of hide these images. So there we go, perfect. And we can create a component. And there you go, we have a label component. Let's talk about how we can use this in conjunction with this input. Sometimes we find ourselves with a component that is pretty complex. You know, it may not be really, really complex. I mean, some do get that complex, but they may feature something like labels, like you've seen here, different types of like text elements, different types of icons. So what's the solution you may ask? We can build components within components. So that's why I mentioned inception. You can create a component for that field element or label and place it within your input component. So we can put these together to create an input component. And every time you update that like individual element, this one or this one, it's going to change across the board. Sometimes you may do this depending on the context, like changing um, just like border radius or just uh, label fill colors, but it's just so easy using these kind of, I call them atomic elements. It's just a game changer when it comes to building, customizing and maintaining components. So let me show you what we can do here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a, a, just a text component. I'll just call it input text. And this will be the main uh, copy that goes within our input. We'll just leave it as black. I think that's good. I mean, we can even bump it up in size a little bit and we're just gonna do that. Okay, so that's fine. So these are our master components, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create this as a component. So there we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take all these, duplicate them as instances. Now I'm going to place this just above the input. I'm gonna place the input just to the inside of that. So if we are using our base unit, we should be spacing with our base unit. So this will be, let's just check if our preferences are proper. So we have our nudge amount, 
So I have that at four, good. So I'm just gonna do shift option and arrow key. And there it is, it's eight pixels from the edge. Over here, I'm just gonna do the same. I think that's fine. So now we have our whole component. And what we can do is we can also stretch this. And you can tell that stretches just beyond there. If you hold down shift control and the arrow key, you can shrink it by your nudge amount. So I've shrunk it, as you can tell from where it was before, aligned over here to eight pixels within. So now I'm gonna select all of these and I'm going to create a component. It automatically gives it a component name and I'm gonna call this form field. Okay, these are our atomic elements and this is our kind of our larger, more complex component. And what we're gonna do is we're going to change the border radius to 100. And as you can tell, it also changes the border radius over there. So if I wanna set to 20 or five, like I originally had it, it changes it. If I think that this text is way too small or way too large, I can bump that down a bit. If this label I feel like is too dark, I can change that as well. And all of a sudden, this instance has changed based off of the changes I made here. So build your components with atomic elements and you can easily have so much control over your larger, more complex components. And that's an easy way to use atomic elements within Figma.